anti-capitalist coffee shop goes out of business in Toronto, The Anarchist was an anti-capitalist, anti-colonial cafe, shop, and radical community space. It opened in March of 2022. It is closing for good on March 30th, 2023. A little research quickly reveals that Toronto has a glut of coffee shops, everything from Starbucks to Tim Hortons. There also exists specialty Italian espresso brewers who allegedly make some great coffee. When you enter a market this packed with competitors offering excellent products, you're going to struggle if you're not on the top of your game. If you look at prices, they're very high. See, the thing about capitalism is that the boss is actually the customer, and they decide what business will be successful. They ultimately decide what will be produced, the quality and the quantity. In the end, entrepreneurs, capitalists, and even farmers are all bound by the market and essentially have their hands tied to meet the demand prescribed by the public. All right, guys, so we got to talk about an extremely fascinating story out of Toronto, Canada, which is a classic get woke go broke story about an alleged anti-capitalist <laughs> cafe closing down after just a year in business now i'm gonna go ahead and play this video for you guys to give you guys a quick understanding of the uh value proposition of this anti-capitalist <laughs> enterprise take a look the anarchist is a worker-owned anti-capitalist anti-colonial cafe shop and community space gabriel opened the space after leaving vancouver due to its unwelcoming sense of classism though he never felt comfortable working in a coffee shop in bc he knew if he were to have one of his own it would have to adopt the values that occupy such a huge part of his life a place devoted to radical leftist politics revolution ending capitalism improving the world's economic system that benefits everyone and not just elites and most importantly sparking conversations that will help implement these ideas other than delicious coffee which gabriel is most definitely an expert in. The shop has a rich selection of progressive political books that he's selling at wholesale prices. I was happy to try some great light roast espresso here. I even tried my first espresso tonic, which is something of a micro-revolution in itself. I highly recommend paying a visit to Gabriel at 190 Jarvis Street, if not for great coffee, for even greater conversation. Yeah, so this was basically a bougie coffee shop selling overpriced coffee. Overpriced, I guess, technically you can call it, at least in terms of what the, the list price is in a middle class to poor part of toronto okay and um there should be no surprises the outcome of this this business okay because this is just another grift that we've seen time and time and time again i'm gonna explain to you guys exactly what i mean okay because this isn't actually what a lot of people are making it out to be this is not actually really communism this is just woke capitalism that failed, right? So, without further ado, let's read a little bit more about this, and I'm going to tell you guys what I think about it. Toronto's supposedly anti-capitalist cafe, The Anarchist, has announced that it would be permanently shut down after just over a year in business. In a nobody-saw-that-coming moment, a Toronto cafe that describes itself as an anti-capitalist, anti-colonial cafe, shop in radical community space on stolen land, announced that it would be shutting down permanently by the end of the month yeah so again it's just amazing how the alleged anarchists okay who don't believe in government right but probably pays taxes to the government okay uh is setting up a anti-capitalist enterprise right which by definition is capitalism okay they ain't giving away the product for free okay uh they claim that the land is stolen and that they're anti-colonial but yet they're setting up a shop on allegedly stolen land Again, the, the hypocrisy here, the contradictions here are just out of control, right? It's just, just out of control, which, again, tells you everything about what this was. This was a, a, a grift. To counter the idea that the business was itself a capitalist enterprise, which it is, <laughs> the cafe introduced a, quote, pay-what-you-can coffee, which the customer said cost the business money, but was supposedly uh, subsidized by more expensive drinks on the menu. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, they sold these bougie overpriced drinks, <laughs> right? Uh, but they said, Hey, well, we're going to, uh, offer a pay what you can coffee, right? Uh, so that, Hey, you can get coffee, uh, by just paying what, what, what you can. Okay. And, uh, you know, that makes us anti-capitalist when it's like, no, 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 that's still capitalism, right? Even if a customer pays one cent for it, right? If you're not giving it away for free. That's still capitalism. It's just bad capitalism, right? It's poor capitalism, okay? Uh, that's what it is. And the reason why is because it's not that businesses don't do this. This is actually a very common capitalist strategy is that you sell certain items at a loss or you have really whole departments really as a loss, particularly in retail stores 
uh, so that you can attract customers to come in and buy your other items. Like, for example, have you guys noticed that despite the inflation on a lot of um, chicken products, uh, like eggs, poultry products, uh, Sam's Club and Costco are still selling chickens for $5. Why hasn't inflation affected their rotisserie chickens? Well, the reason why is because those items are low margin items. Okay, they don't really make money off of rotisserie chickens in the first place. They literally sell them simply to get customers to come into the store and then to buy other items that they have better margins on. Okay, this is a common tactic that retail stores use. And it seems like in this case, the gimmick of having pay what you can coffee uh, did not work out because customers were probably coming in and they were getting this coffee, which almost they were guaranteed to lose money on okay they did not make money off off of it they lost money off of this and they didn't buy the more expensive stuff like all the other communist stuff that they were selling in the store okay because they sold more than just coffee uh, or expensive coffee they were selling other stuff as well too turns out people were probably just going into the shop getting the pay what you want or pay what you can coffee you know just give them a few cents they lose money on it and then um you know they leave Right. And they weren't buying the other higher margin items in the coffee shop. It, this was a, a gimmick. OK, this coffee shop uh, failed to differentiate itself from all of its competitors. OK, the value proposition of this coffee shop uh, was not different enough or was not valuable enough for customers to say, hey, I'm going to pay for this overpriced coffee. Right. Again, there's probably thousands of competitors in Toronto and this coffee shop used this grift of, well, we're anti-capitalist in order to attract customers. And turns out that didn't work because probably the products that they were selling uh, were not any different or were not any better than uh, their competitors, which is something that, you know, you should understand, right? If you're a capitalist, okay, which this guy is a capitalist, but again, this is a grift, okay? This is a grift. They, he's pretending to be an anti-capitalist, right? And I'm going to show you exactly why this guy's a capitalist, okay? Right here, this next sentence right here. Yet, this was seemingly not enough to keep the coffee shop afloat with owner Gabriel Sims. Fewer writing this week, quote, Unfortunately, the lack of generational wealth slash C capital, right? That word capital from ethically bankrupt sources left me unable to weather the quiet winter season or to grow in the ways needed to be sustainable long term. Yeah, so here's the thing. These alleged self-proclaimed anti-capitalists ran into a similar problem that most uh, socialist communist types run into, right? It all sounds great, sounds amazing, until you run out of other people's money, right? <laughs> Quite literally, this coffee shop ran out of other people's money. That's why they shut down. Why would you expect a bank or a venture capitalist to give money to a shop whose value proposition is that we're anti-capitalist, okay? We're not really trying to make money. That that doesn't really make sense, okay? Again, you have the alleged anti-capitalist complaining about a lack of capital to grow his business. Now, again, if the point of the business is simply to be a socialist enterprise, a communist enterprise, which is not, right, then you should be giving away your product and all of the proceeds that you get from giving away your product and people decide to donate, okay, to uh, your cause, right? Uh, all that should be distributed to your employees, right? And that is the way your business should be set up. But the way this business was set up is that they were trying to generate profit, aka <laughs> capitalism, uh, by pretending to be against what they are right and uh there's no surprises here that a bank or investors who are looking at this business model and saying hey you know what? i'm not necessarily sure this is a great business model to uh basically uh allow people to pay what they want for coffee okay and to uh sell more expensive coffee or expensive bougie coffee in you know uh poor neighborhoods or middle class neighborhoods i'm, I'm not necessarily sure we want to invest in this right this don't sound very sustainable especially how you're giving all the profits away back to the employees yeah we're not necessarily uh cool with that right we we actually uh are gonna pass right which i don't blame them i would pass too you're not getting my money okay but the fact that they ask for money seed money which again um 
the expectation is that those investors are going to get a return on investment, that the coffee shop is going to make a profit and then return that profit back to the people that gave them the seed capital. Again, tells you everything you need to know. Again, this is the same grift that AOC does, that Bernie Sanders does, that um, Hassan Abi does, Chank Yoga's nephew, where they pretend that they're socialists, right? They'll push for socialism. Like, for example, Hassan Abi, he'll push for socialism, okay? But yet, he lives his life as a capitalist, okay? The guy has a mansion, I think, in the Hollywood Hills. He drives a Porsche, right? Look at AOC. I mean, she's driving a Tesla, okay? She's selling hoodies and sweatshirts for, like, you know, $65 on her website. Bernie Sanders is selling uh, anti-capitalist books while, you know, talking about, uh, you know, how bad capitalism is. All these people are capitalists, right? They're just using the grift of socialism to try to woo people who are less intelligent into believing that these people actually really are socialists. No, they're not actually really socialists. It's socialism for you, capitalism for me, right? That's what it is. Um, again, it's just hilarious to see uh, this coffee shop uh, not get the formula right, okay? Because, I mean, hey, it works. It just works, you know, in, in different ways. I mean, they just didn't get it right this time. Quote, it's been an amazing experience connecting with so many great community members, sparking desperately needed debate, raising the blood pressure of conservatives, and that includes you, anarcho-capitalists and libertarians, uh, fulfilling the dream of most service workers by not having to tolerate the presence of professional class traders pigs and military and experimenting with living and working in ways that don't uh enthusiastically embrace uh the pure misanthropy of capitalism he continued quote f the rich f the police f the state f the colonial death camp we call canada the statement concluded yeah i mean well sounds to me like you need to um leave right just leave canada which i mean hey probably is not a, a bad idea Okay, but at this point, uh, where are you going to go, <laughs> right? Uh, maybe you should go to China. I'm pretty sure that in China, um, that is probably going to be closer to the world that you want. But, I mean, even China has opened themselves up to uh, having a market economy because they know that <laughs> capitalism overall is a net positive, okay? That their economy can't purely be a economy directed by the government that they have to have some market driven principles in order to actually grow and to be sustainable again it's just kind of funny how that works um the anarchists uh which opened for business in march of 2022 went viral last year with internet users mocking the leftist cafe for charging high prices for especially coffee as well as selling radical art books clothing jewelry tote bags and stickers Quote, rest in peace, Marks and Ingalls, who you would have loved the anarchist coffee shop in downtown Toronto that was charging $4 for a coffee in your name, one Twitter user said. Yeah, um, no surprises here, <laughs> right? Uh, I just find it hilarious. Again, the irony is out of this world, but, you know, uh, this is what happens, okay, when you really don't have a real value proposition or bring anything to the table as a business that separates you from the competition, okay? Uh, yeah, you go out of business, right? Which is capitalism 101, right? <laughs> uh, this business should have picked a better grip, I meant value proposition, um, instead of selling uh, expensive coffee in middle class and poor neighborhoods and thinking that they were going to actually make money, just because they call themselves anti-capitalists. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.